I know everyone who clicked on this video is wondering what were those two objects on a thumbnail. I'm here to tell you that after this quick message from a sponsor, you. Yes, this channel is officially a part of the YouTube Partner Program. I'd also like to say that I'm honored to serve this little audience of mine, and I didn't say happy to serve or discreetly to serve because it won't always be sunshine and rainbows or thunder and rain that I'm necessarily looking towards. But instead, I see the path that this channel will take, and with the support slash backing from viewers like you, I can only say that I'm honored to serve such a responsive audience of mine. I do read all the comments, including all the negative and the positive, and respond in due time. Now more than ever, I'm eager to get back to work and push out valuable content. Now with my presidential speech out of the way, let's get back to the video. As some of you may have guessed, the objects in the thumbnail are two sticks of RAM. What's so important and impressive about these two sticks of RAM is the 78% gain in FPS that they can deliver. Since I recently found out that a lot of the laptops and PCs that people use, like yours, may only have one stick of RAM. So for the people that have one stick of RAM, this is a video I would pay attention to. Moving on, switching to this crucial kit of RAM upgrades it from 16 gigs to 32 gigs, which has some immediate and obvious benefits, which will be on screen right now. You can pause the video to read the obvious benefits. Now, the not so obvious benefits of 32 gigs comes from its configuration and just some quick and easy to understand fundamentals of RAM. Now, now the way I configured 32 gigs of RAM is by installing two sticks of it rather than one stick of 32 gigs. This is actually the root cause of why my laptop performs so much better as we'll see later in the video. Now the technical term is going from single channel to dual channel. The benefits of dual channel memory are nicely worded by this website right here which is linked in the description if you want to check it out. Knowing about the benefits of dual channel memory is great and all but how did I come to choose this kit of RAM? Thankfully this decision making isn't complicated at all as I'll explain right now. When looking for RAM for any laptop or PC we first have to check for any restrictions that we were under. The three restrictions that I used to guide my RAM purchase are the CPU I'm working with, the motherboard, and budget. The CPU I'm working with is the Intel i7-8750H, and conveniently, all the restrictions are listed in the provided data sheet by Intel. Scrolling down, we see that the maximum speed I can use is DDR4 2666MHz, with no more than 64 gigs and a maximum bandwidth of 41.8 gigabits per second. The motherboard restrictions that I'll be working with are pointed out by searching the model of the specific laptop, which is GL63 8SE by MSI. Here, it tells us that the max we can use is 32 gigs and 2666MHz, and it has to be configured in two slots. Knowing this, I headed over to Amazon and looked around. Since the price for DDR4 2666MHz and DDR4 3200MHz was nearly identical if not a little bit cheaper, I opted for DDR4 3200MHz as well as from a good brand and it fits my specification in excess. Now people are going to comment that there's no point in buying DDR4 3200MHz for my laptop as Intel laid out that DDR4 2666MHz is a max for my CPU. But you see, my laptop doesn't obey this rule and I was actually able to get 293300MHz running. This then leads me to my second stage of improving lots of RAM, which is apart from buying new RAM. This improvement is known as overclocking, as some may have guessed, and we can break it down into two different methods. The first method is by overclocking the RAM's megahertz, and the second method is by tightening the cast latency timings. Both of these optimizations are best performed in the BIOS, but to keep things flowing, I'll show how to optimize RAM in a future video. Now said, let's get into the test results we've been dying to hear since it's already the video. Just like in Atlas Windows video, we'll first look at user benchmark to give us a general performance evaluation. One thing I would like to bring up is a comment that I got on my last video that expressed their concerns for using user benchmark as a tool for measurement. This was due to user benchmarks biased against AMD hardware in their tests, which has been thoroughly covered by other YouTubers. Despite this, however biased the results may be, if we compare the same hardware to itself and not across brands, we can capture the biased results. Thus, we will continue using user benchmark until a better alternative is found. With that being said, the numbers to beat are the numbers we got using Atlas Windows on single channel memory at default speeds. And we're going to compare it against dual channel memory with both default speeds and OC speeds as well. As we can see here, with the dual channel memory at default speeds, we added a couple of percentage points across the board from Atlas Windows. What is amazing is the near 10% improvement we get when we optimize our RAM in terms of both megahertz and cache latency. This shows that dual channel memory is a way to go when assigning between using one stick of RAM or two sticks of RAM, and that optimizing RAM can be just as potent without more of an improvement. For transparency, we could have used a better test results from the Atlas Windows video, but it didn't make sense to do so because the laptop wasn't able to recreate those results for a second time. Since the Atlas Windows test we compared against was recreated numerous times, this indicates that the results used to compare against in this video were much closer to the baseline performance of this laptop with only the Atlas Windows optimization. Moving along, let's now look at the improvement on a component basis. The transition from single channel memory to dual channel memory with OC speeds more than doubled RAM performance and with a dual channel memory at default speeds, we still achieved an impressive score of 83.3%. As for the GPU and Kingston SSD, the scores achieved were relatively the same for the GPU, while the score for the Kingston SSD is inconclusive, but maintains a score greater than 100%, which is more than enough for what 
I intend to do with this laptop. This performance carries over to the CPU as well, with nearly a 10% improvement with the dual chime memory at OC speeds, and just a 1% gain at default speeds. Now onto the gaming performance in Fortnite. Just like in the last video, we tested three different static scenarios and three different dynamic scenarios. We do these tests to find out the peak performance of this laptop through the static tests, and the dynamic tests help us engage how well the laptop can provide a consistent experience with lots of moving variables. First up is DX11, and in the static test, we can only see a massive improvement in performance when comparing Atlas Windows to dual channel memory at default speeds. In all three scenarios, we're adding an additional 109 FPS to our average at minimum, and then we have dual channel memory and OC speeds. Here we're adding an additional 164 FPS to our average FPS at our highest to an additional 109 FPS at our lowest, like when using dual channel memory at default speeds. Overall, the 1% and 0.1% lows were improved by 179% at minimum, indicating a stutter free experience in these static tests. In the dynamic tests, we see more tame results, but still impressive results nonetheless. In free building with a dual channel memory at default speeds, we got 224 FPS, but at OC speeds, we hit above our goal of 240 FPS consistently and reached up to 250 FPS. Now in gliding, it seems that we've hit a plateau with a dual channel memory at both speeds, but considering some people play at 144 Hertz, it's not a bad range for our FPS to sit. Now in game, we got close to doubling our FPS, going from 128 average FPS to 221 average FPS. Unfortunately, despite the average FPS increase in all three scenarios, the laptop still suffers from stutters from time to time, as indicated by the 1% and 0.1% lows in the dynamic tests. Second up is DX12, and at first glance, we can already see that the jump in performance is tame when compared to DX11, so we won't waste much time here. With a dual channel memory at both speeds, we gain a minimum of 73 FPS across the board, which is still no small feat in any way. In the 1% and 0.1% lows, big strides were made, making the gameplay less prone to stutters overall. Now when looking at the dynamic test for DX12, we see the same trend from the static test with lower performance than DX11. In both free building and in game, we see less FPS overall than in DX11, but in gliding, we were able to break through the plateau of 144 FPS. In the 1% and 0.1% lows, we still weren't able to escape out of the stutters just yet. Third, we have performance mode on high meshes. Here we reach heights I never thought was possible with a simple RAM upgrade. And as we touch the reality of consistent 360 FPS, but these are the static tests after all. In the 1% and 0.1% lows, it seems some stutters were introduced, but it's understandable as we're pushing much higher FPS than before, and it's not like people would expect to play at 360 FPS with this laptop, but rather 165 FPS or my somewhat overreaching goal of 240 FPS. Now moving on to the dynamic tests, and let me just say that I'm impressed with how fast we achieve 240 FPS. In both free building and in-game, we can be rest assured that we will be getting 240 FPS unless otherwise for reasonable reasons like during endgame. In gliding, we once again broke through the plateau, hitting a new high of 188 FPS. Despite these gains, stuttering still persisted as shown by the 1% and 0.1% lows, even with our impressive gains in the average FPS. And last we have performance mode on low meshes. In the static test, we hit new all-time highs of 374 FPS and never went below 360 FPS with a dual channel memory at OC speeds. And even at default speeds, we are 100 FPS above our goal of 240 FPS on average. Looking at the 1% and 0.1% lows, we've made massive strides to the upside in the 1% lows, but still, the 0.1% lows are far below the average FPS by a big margin, indicating that there are stutters. Now moving on to the dynamic test, we oddly enough reached lower FPS than when using high meshes. This is not bad in any means as the gap in performance is within 5 FPS. Overall, we maintain the same FPS from low meshes, just being lower by 1-2 to two FPS at most. In the 1% and 0.1% lows, we still have a stuttering issue with the FPS dropping by a huge margin. So that sums up dual time memory at both default and OC speeds. Is it worth it? I believe yes, because not only did it double FPS in most cases, but it also boosted the performance of other components as well. Put simply, since every component in the system needs to store, access, or retrieve information from RAM, it only makes sense that the entire system gets an uplift in performance when we improve the RAM itself or replace it with a better alternative. Since there's less delay, extra execution, and less turnaround time, we get a jump in performance. That'll be it for me, and if you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like, a share, or subscribe to show your support. Bye for now, and I'll see you in the next video.